Winning the Montana Circuit Finals in January kickstarted the year that Timmy Sparing had been looking for since buying his PRCA card back in 2012. The Helena Montana Cowboy finished 71st in the Steer Wrestling World standings a year ago, but will be heading to his first National Finals Rodeo next month in 14th place. Timmy, thanks for making time for us today. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. You've been chasing the NFR dream for 11 years now. How does it feel to finally make it to Vegas? Uh, it feels awesome. Um, I've worked pretty hard at this for quite a few years and um, for it to finally kind of pay off, it, it feels it's a dream come true. Honestly, I've been watching all my good friends do it and look up to a lot of people and finally feels like I got that off my shoulders and feel like I kind of belong with some of the best in the, that first year. I've I ran him a lot in my head already, but yeah, I've been looking forward to run a steer in that arena for a long time. So I'm just excited to bulldog. What do you think made the biggest difference this year compared to previous years for you? The last few years, I just rodeoed around Montana, so I didn't get to go to any really big rodeos, but it kind of helped me get a little bit of confidence, honestly. I had a few injuries that I had to work through and kind of just getting your mental game back and getting confidence and, and getting in a flow. And then um, on top of that, riding good horses. I rode uh, Dirk Tavner's horse quite a bit and Bridger Chambers' horse a lot and um, in our event, horsepower kills, so you have to have that. And will those be the same horses that you're going to ride in Vegas? Yeah, I'm going to ride Dirk's horse, Oscar. Um, he rode him last year, and he won four rounds on him, so the horse is proven, and I rode him a bunch this summer, and he's he definitely fits that setup, so I'm pretty excited to be on him. That's got to give you some confidence heading into that setup to be on a horse that's been there, and who's going to haze for you? Uh, Dirk will. Dirk's going to haze for me, and then I'll haze for Dirk. Now, we only get to see the highlight reel throughout the year, but know that life on the road has just as many ups as downs. Tell us about that. I feel like a lot of people don't see what goes on outside the arena um, because there's so much other stuff. You know, the logistics of rodeos is tough when you're entering, you know, four or five rodeos a month in advance and what horses you're having here, what horses you're having there. And on top of traveling with good guys, guys that know how to win, um, that have a positive attitude. I think the mental game is huge in rodeo because there were times where I was winning and everything was great. And there's times where I didn't win anything and it, it, it's hard, but you have to stay positive and, and have a good mental game. This may be your first NFR qualification, but it's not your first time in the Thomas and Mac as you haze for Casey Jones back there in 2013. Tell us about that. Do you think that experience gives you any sort of a leg up as a contestant this year? Oh yeah, absolutely. I haze there for, Jonesy um I think it was two or three years and then I haze for Rowdy Parrot one year and haze for Ty Erickson Clayton Haas and Tyler Weggs back there he won his first um gold buckle so yeah that's definitely an advantage I feel like um a lot of the jitters I'll still be a little bit nervous more of a of an excited nervous but there's a lot of pressure haze in there and it's it's tough so I feel like being on the other side now it, it should be a little bit easier I kind of know kind of know the deal you set a bracket record at San Antonio back in 2014. You've won Houston. You had some more luck in the buildings this year. Is it safe to say that you prefer those fast indoor setups? That's got to give you some confidence heading into the Thomas and Mac. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely like the fast setups. I like Salinas and Pendleton a lot. I like kind of those cowboy style events, but I've had luck at Houston, a lot of luck. And um, some of those bigger indoors, that faster setup fits me. So I, I'm looking forward to Vegas for sure. You earned your first trip to the NFR Open in Colorado Springs this year after winning the Montana Circuit Finals back in January. As someone who's been more of a circuit cowboy the last few years, talk to me about the opportunities that the circuit system gives cowboys who have other responsibilities or that simply don't want to hit the road full time. It definitely helps them. I mean, to make Colorado Springs and to do good there, it can kind of help a guy break out of being a circuit guy or, you know, someone that has to stay home. It, and it's really tough to to try to get out there on the road and qualify for the bigger indoor um, rodeos in the winter. So um, to give a circuit guy a chance to make it a living is, is huge because there's a lot of guys trying to do that. Do you feel like you fit into that category when you initially bought your card? Was the plan the NFR or, you know, we'll just kind of dabble around the circuit for a few years, see how it goes. What was that path like for you? No, my goal was always to make the NFR and it didn't happen right off the bat, but it just, it meant I had to keep working at it. Now, now it finally did. So it's paid off. Bulldogging is a very physical sport. You've had your fair share of injuries. How have those changed the trajectory of your career and how are you feeling going into the finals? Bulldogging, I mean, it's a tough event. So there's, 
injuries are going to happen. A lot of guys fight through them just like I did. So um, bouncing back from them, just learning from them, being a little bit sp- smarter maybe on on some rounds or just getting a little wiser, I guess, um, taking care of your body. I work out every day and stretch and, and taking care of your body really, really helps those injuries. But fighting through that mentally and knowing that you'll get back and you'll get stronger, it's been kind of the path I've been on. You're the first in your family to compete in rodeo. Talk to me about that. How did you get into the sport? And then who have been some of the biggest mentors? Yeah, I was the first one to, to rodeo in the family. And that got started from watching John Wayne as a little kid with my grandpa instead of cartoons. Um, I dressed like a cowboy ever since I was little and that's all I wanted to do. So um, my mom and dad are pretty special that they let me kind of pursue that career because they had no idea what that entailed. And um, all the friends, I mean, the community of rodeo, they've all been super supportive. My best friend, Ty Erickson, kind of helped me get rolling. And then a family friend kind of taught me how to learn horses. Actually, he was out here helping me build the house earlier. So lots of people have helped me get to where I'm at, but I didn't start till I was a senior in high school. So it was definitely a, a learning curve, not growing up around it. What's been the most surprising to you about this lifestyle and this career as someone who didn't grow up in that world? I mean, it's day in and day out work when you're, I mean, on the ranch or or rodeo. I mean, there's no days off. I I knew that going into it and I I love it. It doesn't feel like work when you enjoy it so much, but um, it's, it's all day, every day kind of deal. We touched on the circuit finals. You won Walla Walla this year, Prescott, I believe. Are there any other big wins that you haven't accomplished yet that are still on your bucket list? Pendleton, that's on the top of my bucket list now. Uh, Houston was definitely one I wanted to win. That um, did that, so I'd like to win them all. But Pendleton is definitely, definitely one that I would love to win. What advice would you give to someone like yourself that may or may not have had any sort of rodeo upbringing, but grew up wanting to be a cowboy and now dreams of backing in the box at the NFR someday? To young kids out there that might not have, you know, everything in their back pocket, if you want it bad enough, you can you can work at it and you can find a way. You'll always find a way if you want it bad enough. I didn't really grow up rodeoing and just kind of followed a dream more or less and that's a lot of advice that I still tell myself whenever you're, you know, fighting or whatever, just give advice to your younger you and, and usually it works out.